And get this, that's all it takes for Cypher to give up his whole life in service of some evil mastermind. Honestly, is Cypher the most easily manipulated little worm on the planet or what? In essence, all she did was insinuate he had a small dick. No, really. It's just about one step up from going... <laughs> Seriously, are we supposed to buy this? Who's going to believe that a hero, young and reckless though he may be, is simply going to abandon his entire life and his career in a prestigious, respected order of warrior knights just because some evil wizard challenges his feelings of powerlessness and impotence and offers him the chance at power and respect he feels he's been denied? You're not all powerful. <laughs> well, I should be. I will be the most powerful Jedi ever. Anyway, the sorceress vanishes, dragging Cypher along by his balls through the magic portal when- Whoa, wait, did you see that? Hey, the sorceress vanished and Renoa just ran into the scene. She just pulled a Clark Kent! Watching it. Okay, so after failing again, the group tries to, uh, regroup. Renoa says the Forest Owl's base has been destroyed. How does she know that? So they- what the hell is Renoa doing in this alley? Should I be watching this? Ugh. Okay, the group pulls up in some lady's house while I decide to... And what is Zell doing? Oh, man, there's an awful lot of squatting going on in this game. Honest to God, Zell, can't you go ten minutes without jerking off in the corner of some stranger's house? For some reason, Squall and the others chalk Cypher up as a dead man, even though they all just witnessed him being recruited as a sorceress's cabana boy. Renault is still hopeful Cypher's okay, although I have no idea why. The guy is a complete toad. And Squall just starts whining his usual emo bullshit about how if you never expect anything good, you'll never be disappointed. To which Renault shrieks that Squall is a meanie and storms out. Meanie? What are you, six? She's leading a guerrilla anti-government resistance movement and she's still calling dudes meanies? I mean, honestly, the fate of the entire world is resting on these people. And if you think she's bad, I don't even mention the wide-awake kawaii nightmare that is selfie. Love and peace! I'm just saying, she's one high school heartbreak away from becoming this. <laughs> so after that debacle, everyone figures it's a good idea to go back home and lay low until the heat's off. But there aren't any trains going back there, but luckily there's another garden nearby just over the river and through some woods. It makes me wonder why, though, if there's another garden so much closer to timber, why the forest owls just didn't hire soldiers from there? Especially since the game has already established that long-range communications are impossible. Even halfway through the trip, Zell is still shitting bricks that because of him, Galbadi is going to attack his home garden. Honestly, dude, even if they do, I really wouldn't worry too much about it because so far, they've been repeatedly foiled by a group of high school girls. Their argument is interrupted when once again the three of them are pulled into a dream world where Laguna and the gang are trying to infiltrate what looks like Superman's Fortress of Solitude. I think this is supposed to be the past, but I have no idea why the characters all have the same inventory, use the same GFs, and have the same magic and abilities junctioned as my old characters. D did none of these characters think this is at all unusual? Uh, hey Laguna, how long have I been able to summon the elemental god of thunder and lightning? Now, I should explain something at this point. I had one of my GFs learn an ability that allows me to pull magic out of hidden spots on the map, so most of the time I'm playing the game, I'm actually hammering the X button to find them. And it's during one of these times that Laguna seems to find an old key that's invisible on the screen, but immediately after you get it, Laguna claims to feel a draft on his butt, and he loses the key through a hole in his pants. It's nowhere to be found on the screen because apparently after dropping it, Laguna kicks it 300 yards down the hall, around a corner, and up a flight of stairs. If you keep scouring every square inch of the base, you can actually find the key again. But this time when you pick it up, Laguna sneezes and loses it again! What the... how the... what in the hell was the point of that? What is wrong with you? D do you ever get to keep the key? What is it open? Why is it there? What am I doing here? Why? I don't even remember this from the first time around. This is something new I found. I seriously think this game is just fucking with me now, finding fresh new torments for my soul! The monsters in the Fortress of Solitude are just weird. Not only are there human and cyborg guards, but there's also some kind of flying tentacle beast that holds you down and teabags you, as well as some kind of weird alien who very nicely cast a cure spell on me before I panicked and shoved a harpoon up its ass. I don't really know what I'm doing here, but eventually Laguna finds himself backed up on the edge of a cliff and attacked by cyborg soldiers. No matter what you do, the last one you kill invokes some kind of power called Soul Crush and takes everyone down to one hit point. Your trusty sidekicks collapse because of their injuries, and Ward seems to be unable to speak because of a wound to his throat, although I suspect he wants his last words to be, Fuck you, Laguna! In an attempt to get him moving again, Laguna climbs on top of Ward and, I'm not kidding, 
starts to tickle him. He tickles him. When treating a friend who has a mortal throat injury, what should you do in that circumstance? A. Apply pressure to the wound and remind the patient not to panic. B. Elevate the afflicted area and hope the bleeding will die down with proper bandaging. Or C. Tickle him! Why don't you just give him a pink belly while you're at it, you fucking dolt? And, and hey, here's an idea. What about casting, um, I don't know, a cure spell? Or a healing potion? Or any one of the other hundreds of curative items I just spent hours collecting? Come on! Well, surprisingly, tickling the dying man doesn't help much. In desperation, Laguna notices some boats moored in the harbor below, but when he tells the others about them, Kiros just says, It's normally called a vessel. No, smartass, those are boats. Shut up. And just in case Laguna hasn't caused enough crippling injury to his buddies already, he decides the best thing to do is to hurl his critically injured companions off the cliff into the jagged rocks and water hundreds of feet below. Man, I bet when Ward hits the water, it's going to be like the asteroid hitting in deep impact. After that, the group wakes up, more annoyed than interested about their shared hallucinations, and resumes their trick to the- Ugh! Hey, they've only got one- You son of a bitch! The Soul Crush carried over to my normal characters? That's bullshit! Why didn't any of them mention they were at one goddamn hit point? That's just cheap! <sighs> Alright. After all that, the group finally makes it to Galvadia Garden, where they're given a new assignment. Terminate the Sorceress with extreme prejudice. It seems the president of Galbadia has appointed the Sorceress as an ambassador of peace, but nobody really buys that since she's the epitome of all that's evil, and it's clear that all they want to do is take over the world. Of course! Hiring the Sorceress as your ambassador of peace makes about as much sense as appointing the Green Goblin as the director of S.H.I.E.L.D. Wait. This time they're going the more elegant and simple route of shooting her in the face with a high caliber rifle from half a mile away. And to accomplish this task, they're assigned a professional sharpshooter named Irvin. Well, at least he keeps a low profile. He's so inconspicuously dressed. Nobody would ever be suspicious of the guy dressed like an Old West gunslinger carrying a high-bore rifle. Is there some kind of special store where these guys go to to find the worst, most uncomfortable outfits in the world? Is there a walking cliché warehouse, or do you have to get a mail-order catalog? Uh, yes, um, I'd like the Briscoe County package. Um, that's made with a 100% stereotype, right? And just in case you were in danger of accidentally liking one of these characters, Irvin's a complete cock who hits on anything with a pair of tits, and he does it with all the grace of a drunken asshole at a wet t-shirt contest. The ladies have none of it, and seriously, when the other men in the group consist of a whining, brooding emo pissant named Squall, and a hyperactive half-monkey named Zell, and the ladies think you're the creep, seek help. But I'm getting a little ahead of myself. First I had to find the train to Dulling City. Maybe I wasn't paying attention, but I didn't actually know where the train station was, so I spent like an hour running around looking for some place to- ah! Wait, what in the... Uh. Well, it turns out the train is literally 10 feet to the northwest of the garden. It's just the camera controls are so bad I wasn't able to see it until I was right on top of it. And naturally, I have to pay 3,000 bucks for train tickets out of my own pocket, which still galls me even though I shouldn't really care. See, by now, thanks to the internet, I've downloaded a cheat sheet of all the seed exams and raised myself to seed level 20, so now I can just make $15,000 by running around in circles for a few minutes. I guess seeds get paid by the hour. So, I'm on the train, but it's not moving. I can't open the door, and I've already talked to everyone. If I try to go further, Squall just says, I can't go on before selfie. So what do I do? Well, get this. You have to try and leave the train the same way you come in, and you bump into selfie coming inside, and then you can go. Well, <laughs> obviously, right? When the train finally arrives in Delling City, Renoa tells you that you can meet your contact by taking bus number 8. Which is really easy, because every bus in the city is bus number 8! Once you arrive, the guy's doorman stops you and refuses to let you in until you can pass a test of bravery first by going to some ancient tomb. 
a test of bravery? Seriously, dude? Fuck you. How about this for a test of bravery? How about I summon the fucking devil to peel your face off and fuck you in the eye socket? Because I kicked his ass and he's my bitch now. At least you could have told me about this before I spent 3,000 bucks on fucking train tickets all the way out here.